In Totnes, England, we meet an inspiring person who wants to use the law to protect our planet. My name is Polly Higgins. I am an international lawyer and I also happen to be a lawyer for the earth. About 11 years ago, I found myself thinking the earth is a need to be a good lawyer. And that how could it be that corporations, which are a fictional entity, have legal rights, but the earth doesn't have rights? And more than that, how is it that corporations that are a fictional entity do not have certain responsibilities to the earth? What are those responsibilities that we need to put in place? What, what is the duty of care that we collectively owe to the earth? So that was the beginning of my journey of exploring how we could put in place laws that for me were missing. You could say looking out onto the world and looking at all the destruction out there, that something was clearly going wrong. You know, I look at the Athabasca tar sands, I look at fracking, I look at deforestation, I look at the use of chemicals and pesticides and big industrialised farming, and, I, and what I see is huge damage and destruction, and not just ecological destruction, but also cultural ecocide. Uh, whether or not it's the Sami land up in Sweden and Norway that's been destroyed for mining purposes, or whether or not it's the indigenous world in the Amazon that's, that's losing you know, day by day vast tracts of land, acres and acres, being destroyed, and, and for what? Short-term profit. And what I'm working on at the moment is ecocide law to criminalise mass damage and destruction. Amazingly, it's not a crime to cause significant harm, unwanted harm to the earth, yet. So what I'm doing is I'm legally advising on how we can put that law in place. At the moment, individuals must go to court and sue the state or a corporation for not properly protecting the earth. Such litigation is costly time-consuming and does not always lead to the desired outcome, namely outlawing harmful behaviour. Polly argues for making ecocide a crime. Criminal law, however, is different because it becomes incumbent upon the state to take action on behalf of its citizens. So when an individual or a corporation commits a crime, it's for the state to take that legal action on your behalf. It's also faster. It also has the potential to put in place different rem remedies. And it also outlaws that activity, hopefully once and for all, rather than allowing that company to continue on with what it's doing. So there's a powerful motivation here to actually recognise it as a crime to cause significant harm to the earth and to create that legal duty of care. Polly reminds us that when slavery was abolished, it went against the mainstream economic interests of the time. To protect human beings, the law was used to accomplish what was ethically the right thing to do. Now it's time to put adequate laws in place to protect the earth. So it's a peace mission, if you like. And to do that, I think, requires citizen engagement. It's, it, it's not something that happens in a rarefied environment behind closed doors just by a few people. I, I think this is about us all stepping into that role as trustees for the earth. Ecocide can become an international crime if at least 83 states agree to amend an existing international treaty, the Rome Statute. Yet Polly calls not just on governments to take action, Everyone can do what is in their power to protect the earth. This is about self-empowerment. The best thing you can do is actually take action from wherever you are, whatever your skill base is. I'm a lawyer, so I, I looked at how I could use law to protect the earth. It, it's really about self-authorization, is what I call it. How you, you choose to take your life forward and engage in whatever way that is. It doesn't matter if you're working within a corporation. That corporation is ripe for doing something great for the earth. It doesn't matter if you are a single mum with screaming kids around you. Those children are ripe to come on a journey to see how they can do something great for the earth. And it can be the tiniest thing because from the smallest seeds can grow the greatest of, 
of change in each and every single one of us and within our communities. Sometimes it really is just a matter of turning around and also asking for help, saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Can you help me? Can you come on board? I'm a great believer that the person who has an idea has all the help and support around them to make it happen, whatever that idea is. And you know what? If people tell you that you're crazy, then you know you're on to a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, dare, dare, dare to be great, dare to get out there and, and dare to change the world. Uh, you know, one step will take you to another, another. And this is the wonderful thing. As soon as you start taking these steps, you start finding your, finding your like-minded individuals who are also on that journey as well. And that is a symbiotic process, if you like, where we're unified by common intent, by daring to care, daring to care enough to go and do something about it. That small step can start you on a very big and great journey. Thanks for that.